And welcome to Cooking with Nick, the cooking class that will show you how to prepare a quick and healthy four-course dinner in a short amount of time. There's nothing more important than eating dinner with your family as often as possible. With a little preparation and some quick tips from me, you will always have time to make dinner for your family. So if we're all ready to cook, let's get started on our meal for today. Okay, tonight what we're going to have is, uh, the entree we're going to have is chicken pomodoro, which is chicken with a nice tomato sauce, and it's got vodka in it and cream. Uh, and we'll be using light cream tonight because, you know, we're on a diet. But it was also the only thing they had in the store when I went. So <laughs> otherwise, I would use heavy cream. Or you could use half and half if that bothers you. So we're going to have that as our entree. We're going to have a spinach and white bean soup. Okay, well, that's the first thing you're going to be eating. We'll get the soup going. Uh, I'm going to do a lemon basil couscous. Um, and somebody I ran into in town wanted to know what couscous was. Uh, couscous is a grain. It's, it's like a pasta, okay, very small pasta. And those of you who've had it before while you're here. So, uh, so it's a pasta, very quick cooking, takes about five minutes to cook and you're all done. So we're going to season that up because it's very plain and takes on the flavor of whatever you cook it with. So we're going to cook it in some chicken stock and then we're going to add pesto and we're going to add lemon. Okay, so we're going to have a lemon basil couscous to go along with the chicken. Uh, for the dessert, we're going to do baked apples. And when you think of baked apples, everybody goes, oh my, they take so much time to make and yada, 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 the whole thing. So these are going to be real quick. Uh, we'll put it together, get them in the oven. It takes about 20, 25 minutes to bake in the oven, and you're all set. And we're going to serve that. You could usually, sometimes people serve that with vanilla ice cream, but you're probably getting sick of eating ice cream every time you come here. So, so I figured I'm, <laughs> I put a little different topping on top of it. So we're going to take uh, some vanilla yogurt. We're going to mix it with some honey, lemon juice, and lemon zest. And we're going to drizzle that over the top of the baked apples. Okay? So that's what we're going to do. The first thing I'm going to start with is the baked apples. So you're going to have to go on the back part where it says dessert because we want to get those in the oven so those will be ready for you to eat after you get through everything else. Okay? And then we're going to get the soup going. So I might be doing these same things at the same time because we have to get the vegetables in the soup. And the soup takes very little time. You saute the vegetables. Add the stock and whatever, so you're all set. Okay, so we're going to start with the apples. And to get a little jump start, what, let me move this out of the way. Here. Okay. Um, you need to core the apples. And I'm using Granny Smith apples. And these are, you know, a little small. You usually get the big Granny Smith apples, but if you don't want those great big huge ones, just get the, the small ones. You know, so uh, take your corer and go through. And you want to go all the way through because you want to get that core out. So, you know, and stand it up. And then that piece comes right out. But you want to make sure that you get all of the seeds in that core out. Okay? It makes a nice little hole so you have room to put the filling. Okay? I, I got started on these because I didn't want you to have to sit here and watch me core 15 apples. Okay? Sometimes you luck out and get the whole thing right out. But other times you get stuck with a little bit. So just go, go through and make sure you get that out because you don't want to chomp on any of the seeds. And these little, the little Granny Smith apples uh, usually come in a bag instead of individual. So, you, so they're a little bit cheaper. And we're gonna, the filling we're going to use, we're going to use uh, uh, raisins, cinnamon, sugar, and we're, going to, and we're going to soak them in apple juice. Okay, and the apple juice is what's going to help steam them and cook them as they soften up. Okay. So I got those all done. I'm going to make the filling. If you don't have one of these, it, it's very easy. You can use it for pears, whatever. You know, very handy little tool to have. Let me wipe this up. Okay, to, to sweeten this up a little bit, I'm going to add some uh, craisins to this. Not just plain raisins, but we're going to add some craisins to it. So, I'm just going to use plain, you know, apple juice to get that going. 
Okay, so I have some sugar, some walnuts. Everything goes in one bowl. These are chopped walnuts. Just throw everything in there. And when you do the walnuts, you want to make sure that you chop them small enough so that they'll fit inside the hole. You don't want the whole halves, otherwise you're not going to be able to get them in there. I have in here, I have uh, craisins and uh, yellow or golden raisins. You can use, I just happen to have those, so that's, that's what I'm going to use. Get that in there. And some sugar. And I'm going to make sure I get everything in. Okay, so just put the sugar in. And you need a, a fairly, you know, half a cup of sugar, a cup of sugar. And some cinnamon. If you wanted to, you could put cloves, nutmeg. If, if, you, if you really run, you don't have uh, the cinnamon in your, in your cupboard and you have uh, pumpkin pie filling, you could just throw that in. Okay. And I know it's going to seem, you're going to, you're going to say, boy, but that's a dry filling. But what's going to happen is we're going to put the apple juice in there, you know, and it's, and it's going to moisten it up. Because we're going to put a fairly good amount of apple juice on the bottom, so it's going to steam all the way through the apples, okay? So that's it. That's, that's what the filling is. So what we're going to do now is go through, oops, I missed this one. Be standing there trying to stuff that, and there's no hole in there. Okay, so basically, what we're going to do now is we're going to go through and just take the filling and pour it in. And you could make you could get up up to this point where you have the, where you've got the filling in there. You could make this ahead of time, leave them in your refrigerator, and then. When you're ready to cook them, then you put in the, uh, the uh, apple juice, okay, and get them in your oven. I have the oven on about 450, 425, 450. Okay, I already have the oven on there. You, you want to make sure you just get it in there and pack it in there. And you, you will have, if you follow that recipe, you will have enough to do eight or ten big apples or, you know, 15 small ones. Don't worry about the apples turning brown. When, if, you, if you make these ahead of time and the apples start to turn a little bit brown on the inside, don't worry about that because when you cook them, they're going to absorb some of the apple juice and it's going to, it's going to turn them a, a, a tan anyway. It's going to discolor them. Okay, a couple more. Of course, I have just as much filling in the pan as I do in the apples. So. This, is a, a, this is a nice dessert to get if you have little kids, because they, they like apples, most kids. And uh, they like raisins, and these are kind of sweet. Okay, I just want to crunch that in there. Spread them out a little bit. Get rid of the rest of the filling. There we go. That's it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take some apple juice and we're going to pour it. You could either pour it over the apples or we just we'll pour it in the pan just to get them going. I'm just going to, but you want, you want to put in enough because we have the oven on 450 and we don't want them to dry out. So maybe about, you know, three quarters of an inch of apple juice in there. Okay, I'm going to get these in the oven and these will be ready for dessert after we have our meal.
Okay, I put the timer on that so we can. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start making the soup. Okay, the actual uh, chicken part of the meal does not take very long. So I'm going to get the soup going and then uh, we'll, we'll work on the chicken. I'll get the couscous going and we'll be all set to go. Okay, so I have. Hi, Jack, how are you? Good. Okay, I have some celery. And I just took what was left in my refrigerator. You know, if you keep it wrapped in uh, paper towels that are moistened and keep it in a bag, it'll keep a lot longer. You know, same thing with the carrots. These carrots I, I peeled and they're all cleaned. Wrap them in a little bit of towel. So they're ready for you to go when you want to get started. Okay, I have an onion. If you, if you really don't like doing this part of making soup, you could go to the grocery store and you buy a mix. It's called Mirepoix, M-I-R-E-P-R-O-I-X, I think is, is how you spell it. And it's basically celery, onion, and carrot. It's all chopped up for you, and you just throw it in there. So it's, it's expensive to buy it that way, but save you time if you're in a hurry. Okay? I'm going to put a little bit of uh, olive oil in the bottom of this pan, soup pot. Okay, just a little bit to coat the bottom. Okay, then I'm going to get uh, the vegetables in there. Okay. And because we're making soup again, you don't really want to mince it. You want it so you can see it in there. Okay, so fairly good sized pieces. I'm using a yellow onion for this uh, because red onion makes me cry, as you know. So uh, I'm just going to use a big old yellow onion. I tried using the onions that are frozen. You, know, you could buy them frozen in the, in the case. But what I found is they, they have an awful lot of water in them. So when you cook with them, all the water comes out, and, and there's so much water in the bottom of the pan. So I don't know if you need to pat them in paper towels or whatever. But by the time I go through all that, I might as well just do the onion. Okay, so I'm going to throw this in. And we get celery in. And the celery again, I'm just going to chop the pieces. I'm going to chop the green part because that has pretty good flavor in it. Okay. Get that in. And I'm not going to put the, the garlic in until I get a nice little bed in there because I don't want the garlic to burn. So I'm going to put that on top of the vegetables. Okay, again, I'm going to do the carrot. And if the carrot's real big, I'm going to cut it in quarters. Because you want everything to be about the same size so it cooks about the same time. So I'm cutting the carrots in half. Soup is always one of those things that's real good to have uh, the ingredients available in your kitchen because on you know nights like tonight, it's always nice to have soup when you get home. And you could always make soup and Throw a sandwich in there, and you're all set to go. Okay. Give this a stir. I'm just going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. Not a whole lot, because we're going to add uh, some kind of leany beans, some white beans. And I'm only going to drain them a little bit. And they have a lot of this be salt in that brine that they have the beans in. So I'm not going to add a whole lot of salt and pepper in it because that's going to spice it up a little bit. What this does at this point is it starts to draw the, draw the moisture out. And they'll cook faster. Okay, I have some garlic. I'll take a couple of cloves of garlic. Okay, 
Okay, I'm just going to do three. I don't know what the recipe is. What does it say? Two? Yeah, whatever. So when you, you, you get in your garlic, just take it like that. Just give it a smash. If you have people who don't like garlic in their, you know, in their uh, food, they don't like to chomp on it or it gives them agita, you know, gas or whatever. <laughs> you know, and some people just don't like that. What you can do is leave the pieces whole like this. You know, put it in so you get the garlic flavor. And then at the end, take it out. Okay, so you have the garlic flavor, but you don't have the garlic in there. Okay. Or if you, you really have an aversion to it, you can just leave it out. Okay. Or you could use garlic powder, you know. Okay, so I'm not going to really chop it too finely and get that in. And, and what's going to happen now is that we, the reason we put the garlic in at the end is, number one, we don't want it to burn. And number two, the vegetables that are already in there are halfway cooked. Okay, so then we'll just start adding all the other ingredients and we don't have to wait for the garlic to cook. This is a, a very, very hearty soup. This is, it has pasta in it, it has all your vegetables in it, uh, chicken stock. It's also very healthy for you, a very healthy soup. Okay, so we got all of that in. I have uh, chicken stock. We're going to add a can of tomatoes. And what I did here, again, why I wasn't adding a whole lot of seasoning is, is because these, tom these diced tomatoes have basil, oregano, and uh, garlic and already in here. Okay, so already seasoned for you. So don't add a whole lot of seasoning in it. Okay, spinach. This is just chopped spinach that I took out of the freezer before I came. Okay. So I'm going to get this open. Uh, and you know when, when I add stock that's from the store, which is just perfectly fine, I always like to add a little bit of water to it because, you know, it has, you know, they say low salt, but you know, it has quite a bit of salt in it. So, let's see. So, you can see the onions are starting to turn translucent. You know, the onions start to cook a little bit. So, that's when you want to add all the rest of the ingredients. Okay? Put that in. Okay, and I'm going to add, oh, probably about a half a, half a can of water. Soup is one of those things that you could stretch it to feed 180 people. You know, you just keep adding stuff to it and it just keeps growing. You know? So we got that in. A can of tomatoes. We're not going to even drain the tomatoes. We're just going to throw them right in. Okay. Put those in. Okay, give this a stir. Let that come up to a boil. Throw in the spinach. Okay, this, this is spinach is a, uh, a little bit still frozen, but it'll cook in here. So, and make sure you get. If you use, you could use fresh spinach if you wanted to. If you had fresh spinach and you wanted to add that in here, you could just throw the whole, the fresh spinach leaves in, and it'll, you know, it'll cook down. Because to get like this much spinach, you probably need about four pounds of fresh spinach. You know how it just <laughs> cooks down. You have like nothing. So uh, I'm just gonna rinse this out a little bit to get what's on the bottom, and throw that in. Okay. So the container's nice and clean for when I have to box up the soup because you don't eat everything, you know, so we'll be all set. Okay, so we got that in. Got three cans of beans. And I, as I said, I'm just going to drain some of the liquid off the top. These Joya cans are kind of nice because they had the pop top thing on it. Kind of...
because I'm not a big one for kitchen gadgets. So I'm always like trying to find the can opener. You know, I bought one of those can openers that goes around the side so it doesn't have any sharp edges. But uh, half the time I can't get it to work. <laughs> so I just, you know, so I get halfway around with that and then I got halfway around with the other one. So whatever. My sister bought one that you just put on the top. It's got a battery in it. You put it on the top and it goes around. You know, uh, she's, she's getting older and she said she can't twist it. You know, but she put that thing on there and I'm sitting there going, yeah, okay. You know, it's going, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like you could be retired by the time the can opens. So, you know, I guess that's okay. But Okay, so we got our, everything is in here. Let that come to a boil. And at the end, when we serve this, we're going we're gonna to add some ditalini pasta. Okay, make it real. This, this is a very, very hearty soup. Ditalini pasta is real small. looks like midget rigatoni. <laughs> you know? But you could use small shells. You could use elbow macaroni. You could use any kind of small pasta that you want. Okay, I like the ditalini because it cooks very quickly. And again, what I did, this is going to have to be in the soup for about three minutes because I undercooked it a little bit. So it, it's going to finish cooking in the soup. And the reason I do that is because if you put this in you could put it in, if you're going to serve the soup immediately, you could put it in raw, okay? It'll cook in there. You know, it'll make the soup very thick because you get a lot of starch in there. But because we're going to have the beans in there, I don't want all that starch. So I pre-cooked it. We're going to put it in there. And in three minutes, it'll be ready, okay? If you leave it in there too long, what'll ha you know what happens to the pasta? This little tube is about the size of my wrist, you know? So it'll swell up, and that's all you have in the soup is pasta. So what you can do is save this to the very end and add it at the end, okay? And then it maintains the integrity of the shape of the pasta, okay? So you could do that. So that's all we have to add to that is the, is the beans. And, uh, well, let me leave it over here because I'm going to start the chicken. Okay, so move this over. So we're gonna, the chicken's right underneath where it has the soup. So that's basically all we have. We're going to have some uh, Parmesan cheese that I know a lot of people like to add their own. So when you guys eat the soup, I'll put the Parmesan cheese over there and you can sprinkle it on the top. Okay, this is a great soup. All you need is a nice big loaf of Italian bread. You know, toast it, smear it with some garlic. You know, did you ever do that? Take the garlic clove, you know, peel it, then uh, smash it a little bit. Put your toast, make your toast, put it in the oven or whatever, however you want to do that, toaster oven, so it gets nice and crispy. And then just take the garlic clove and just spread it over. It'll give you that full garlic taste without having to go crazy with garlic bread. Okay, just smear it on there and then just serve it with the soup. Okay, so it makes a nice, nice meal. Okay. Okay, that's going. I'm going to put the lid on that so it'll come up faster. Okay. Now the chicken, let's get that going. And again, as I said, this is kind of like, uh, uh, like a chicken with a vodka sauce. It'll be all set. So what I did is I took the chicken uh, and I cut it into small pieces. I'll show you what it's going to look like when we're done because I did, I did some more because I know you guys like to eat a lot. So, so it basically looks kind of like this. It's got like a vodka blush sauce on it with chunks of tomatoes. So I'm going to put this in the oven to heat this up because then we'll add it, we'll add it to that. Because remember, I'm going to make this, the recipe I'm going to make is probably enough for about six to eight people. Okay, so we have like 14, 15 people here. So we want to make sure we have enough to eat. Apples smell terrific. So I got that in there. So we need a paper bag because what we have to do is coat the chicken with some flour and get that going. And then we're going to add all the other ingredients. We're going to have to brown, we do this in a couple of stages. We're going to brown the chicken, take it out, uh, add some other stuff to it, the vodka, and get that cooked off a little bit. Put the chicken back in, and then add the tomatoes and all that stuff. 
and then we're going to add cream, and then we're going to let it cook a little bit. Okay, so we'll get that going. Sounds complicated, but it's very easy. Okay, and because I don't have any vegetable oil, and it says to cook it in vegetable oil, I'm going to use olive oil. Just enough to coat the bottom of the pan. You don't want tons of it in there. Okay, and again, when, you, when you're making this and, you, and you're doing it for like, you know, four or five people or six people and you want to use chicken cutlets, where I'm browning the chicken now, you would use the whole chicken cutlet and just brown it and then put it back in the sauce as a cutlet and you would serve it that way. Can you, pound hmm? you can either pound, you take the, the chicken and pound them, okay? If you take a big thick breast like that, just cut it in half, butterfly it, okay, and then pound it and you can get two out of them. Okay? Or you can just buy the chicken cutlets already done. Okay? Those are very expensive. They're like three sixty nine a pound if you buy the cutlets already thin. Okay? So just buy the regular cutlets for $1.99 a pound, cut them in half, put them in some wax paper, pound them a little bit, and you're all set. Or if you cut them in half and they're not really that thick, you don't have to pound them. Just, just leave them. Okay? So you really get, out of one cutlet, you can, out of one chicken breast, you can get two cutlets. Okay? And again, depending on if you like your company, you know, you could pound them and make them real thin or try and get three out of them. But, okay, so what I put in here is some seasoned flour. And what I did is I took a, a cup of flour and I put in salt, pepper, and a little bit of garlic powder and a little bit of parsley. Okay, so I put that right in there. And in order to get this going, I'm just going to put the chicken in here, shake it up, just to get it coated. Okay. Again, if you do it this way, you could really, really stretch the chicken breast. I mean, you get a lot, a lot of pieces out of this. So from one chicken breast, you probably get about uh, eight or nine pieces of chicken. So you can kind of figure out how many people you have coming, how many chicken breasts you're going to need. Okay. Because if you're going to have a lot of other stuff with it, like we're going to have couscous and you know, like a whole meal, you're going to have soup and everything else then, you know, people aren't really going to eat tons of it, you know. Whereas if you have a whole breast, then they'll eat the whole breast or, or they won't eat it, you know, so you waste it, okay. So I'm going to give my hands a quick, quick wash. You want, the oil, you want the oil to be uh, hot enough so it's like medium high, you know, so when you put it in there, it starts to sear right away because you want, what we want to do is get a little bit of color on the chicken, but we're not going to cook it all the way through because we're going to put it back in and let it cook in the sauce. Okay, so we got that in. Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. Just checking. Okay, so we got that in there. And all of, that's why my hair is gray. It's the flower. You thought it was my hair, didn't you? It's a flower. Okay, got that. And I'm going to give this a little. Plus, again, now remember we want to spread these out a little bit. You don't want them all chunked up together because they'll steam. Just stick your hand in there, shake off a little bit of the flour. And what's going to happen, the flour is going to stick to the bottom of the pan, so don't get nervous about that. Because again, what we're going to do is scrape up those bits on the bottom, and that's going to add to the sauce. Plus the flour on here is going to serve as a thickening agent, and it's going to thicken the sauce up a little bit. Probably going to get all of them in here. Okay, all the chickens in there. Get that bag. Wash my hands one more time. Got to make sure when you're working with poultry or pork or any of that stuff that you keep your hands clean. Uh, they usually use a separate cutting board if you're going to do that. You don't want any cross-contamination on that. Okay, let me wipe this off a little bit. Let me 
Check the soup. Okay, can you see up on the, on the overhead that it's come to a nice boil? Well, if you can't, trust me, it's come to a nice boil, okay? <laughs> you can see the steam rising, okay? I'm going to let that go for a, a, a minute or so. Make sure that the carrots, uh, you don't want the carrots to get real mushy. You don't want the vegetables to be mushy, but you want to make sure that they're not raw, okay? So let that cook a little bit. And get the rest of the ingredients for our, our sauce here, okay? I'm going to use, I know it says use chopped tomatoes in there, but you know this time of the year, tomatoes are terrible. I mean, they, did, they don't have any taste. So I'm going to use a, a can diced tomatoes. And what I did is I drained them. So, uh, you know, they have a lot more flavor than if you buy the, the whole tomatoes and chop them up. Plus they're, plus they're a lot cheaper. So, oops. so I, I took those out of the can and I drained them to get most of the liquid out. And that's what we're going to use, okay? That I just sprayed all over every place. Now you can see why I had to have my cookbook on pages that you could wipe off. Okay, because <laughs> that was one of the requirements I had when I had printed. I said, you have to have pages that wipe off. <laughs> okay, so this is going full force here. I'll lower that a little bit. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the pasta, because remember, we have to let the pasta cook for about three or four minutes because it's not cooked all the way through. So we're going to get that in there and let that finish cooking. And the reason it's sticking is because I did not add olive oil to this because I didn't want too much oil in the soup. So I just, but I did it, you know, about a half hour before I came up. So. But again, you could cook the pasta and leave it in your refrigerator, put it in a baggie or a container. It'll separate when you put it in the soup. So don't worry about it being like a big lump. Okay, with that cook, I'm going to add the beans. And I, I like a lot of beans in the soup. You could use different kind of beans. You could use little white navy beans. You could use red beans, you could use pinto beans, you could use whatever kind of beans you like, okay? If you, if you wanted to spend a little more time, you could, uh, instead of beans, you could put barley in here, or quinoa, have you ever had quinoa? It's like a grain. You could put quinoa in there, or uh, you could add rice, you know. You could just dress it up any, of, any way you like, depending on what your family likes to eat. Okay, so a little bit of that, uh, the brine that's in here is going to thicken up the soup a little bit. Okay, let that go for a couple minutes. Soup is done. Okay, soup is done. Spoon. What I want to do is stir this around so the chicken gets... A little cooked on both sides gets a little bit of color. And we're not going to cook it all the way through at this point. Okay, so add that in there. Uh, this is the vodka we're going to put in there. We're going to cook that off. Uh, and, it, and what that's going to do is deglaze the pan, so it's going to pull up all those little crusty bits from the bottom. We'll let that cook off a little bit, and then we'll add the rest of the stuff to it. Okay? So I have some cream. Chicken stock. Again, I'm going to use store-bought chicken stock. I need some lemon. We're going to add a nice little lemon flavor to this, you know, with lemon zest. And I'm going to throw in the juice from the lemon, too. Okay, in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on the back burner. Is that 
Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the couscous. Okay, you need three cups of chicken stock, or you can use vegetable stock, whatever you want. And this you want to measure, okay, because I have about three cups of couscous here. And again, this is plain couscous, but what I did is I added a little bit of salt and pepper, I added a little bit of parsley flakes, uh, just to give it a little more flavor. But we're going to add stuff to it. We're going to add uh, some uh, feta cheese, we're going to add some kalamata olives, and some cherry tomatoes, and we're going to dress it up a little bit. So, but you want to make sure that, the, that you have the same amount of liquid as you do couscous. Okay, so this is about three cups. I'm going to add three cups to this pot. Okay, so I have three cups in there. And I'm going to put this on the stove and bring it up to a boil. When it comes to a boil, I'm going to add the couscous, put the lid on, take it off the heat, and then that's done. And all we have to do is add the vegetables. Okay, so that'll be ready to go. I said cherry tomatoes, some crumbled feta cheese, okay, which if you go to Tops, it's buy one, get one free this week, by the way, okay, and some chopped mint that we're going to add at the end, okay. And I have Kalamata olives, which are uh, black Greek olives. You can get them at salad bar or, you know, you can get them in a jar like that. Make sure, if you buy the collet, make sure you get the pitted ones, okay? Otherwise, you're going to stand there and have to pit all those collets. Okay, you can see the chicken has color on it. So you can see it's got nice color. I'm going to take that out. Okay. Soup is just about ready. What I want to do is get the chicken in with all the sauces and everything. Let that cook a little bit. Then you guys will eat soup. By the time you finish that, the chicken will be done. Okay, you can see at this point what happens is the pan is, is fairly dry. Okay. Ooh, that soup smells good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the vodka and deglaze the pan. And I'm going to take it off the heat. And because the pan is very hot, that'll, that'll uh, evaporate very quickly. I mean, and all it's going to leave is the, the taste of the, you know, that little, uh, like, uh, vodka, potato we taste from the vodka, okay? Okay, so you just want to go in and scrape the pan. And the, the, the little bits on the bottom come off very easily. Uh, if you didn't want to use vodka, just double the chicken stock that you're going to use, okay? But the vodka gives it a nice little taste. And, and you're not going to, there's only like a, a cup of vodka in there, so between 15 people, I mean, you're not going to get stopped for DWI on the way home, so, okay. Okay, so that's evaporating very, very quickly. We're going to add chicken stock to this. And uh, what I'm going to, I'm going to do a little bit differently than it says on, on, the, menu, on the recipe, okay. I'm going to put everything in there except the cream. Let the chicken cook, okay, and then at the very end, add the cream. You don't want to boil the cream because it might curdle, okay? So we're just going to add that at the very end. You okay? Oh, apples smell so good. 
so good. Okay, so we got that going. I'm going to add some chicken stock to this. About a cup. Okay, I'm going to throw in the tomatoes. And again, if it's summertime and you're making this, you could add, you know, chop up fresh tomatoes and you'll be all set. I'm going to use, I'm going to zest the lemon. Make sure you only get the yellow part. You don't want that white part. It's bitter. Uh, and you don't want to get your fingernails in there either because <laughs> you don't want to eat those. <laughs> okay. Got that in. Make sure you get the back. And then because I hate to waste anything, I'm going to put the juice in. Okay. So just give it a roll. Cut it in half. Okay. Let me get this is boiling over here. You can see this is going pretty good over here. Okay, I'm gonna add the couscous. It's three cups. Turn the heat off. And I'm actually gonna I'm gonna take it off the heat. And let that go. See, so couscous will be done in, in five minutes. The only thing we have to add to that would be the vegetables. Okay, let me get the rest of this lemon in here. Again, remember you hold the lemon up this way, because then you, you'll catch the seeds. Okay. Give that a stir. And you can see it starts to thicken up a little bit. You get a nice little uh, uh, sauce in there. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper, not too much. Because again, we'll taste it at the end. Those tomatoes that I put in there were plain diced tomatoes. They were not the seasoned ones. They were plain because you want to season this yourself. Okay. Soup's done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the chicken back in here. Just remember, it's not cooked all the way through. Okay. And again, because there's flour on it, the flour is going to act as a thickening agent in there, and it's going to keep that going. Okay. I'm going to lower the heat a little bit, down to about medium. I'm going to put the top on. So we let that go. The only thing we really need to add to that at the end is going to be the uh, uh, cream. Okay, we'll get that in there a, bit, a little bit later at the, toward the end. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I, I turn the soup off. We're going to move over. I'll put the soup over there. You guys can eat soup. What I'm going to do is chop up the vegetables for the uh, couscous, which will be done by the time you finish eating. This should be done. Okay, so when you come back, you guys will have soup. We'll do a little cooking over here, then you guys are going to have the entree in the side, and then by then the apples should be almost ready. Okay? Get ready for soup. Bowls are already over there. I'll put the Parmesan cheese over there. You can sprinkle this on top. If, if you haven't had uh, this kind of a soup with Parmesan cheese, make sure you put it on. It's, it's, it, has, it has a nice little taste to it. Uh, what we're going to do now is I'm gonna, we're going to finish up the chicken. The chicken's been in here, uh, finished cooking. So the only thing we really have to add to that is we're going to give it a little bit of a taste to see if it needs any salt and pepper in there. I mean, I remember this, we have the vodka in there. We have uh, some tomatoes in there. We have the bits from the chicken. The chicken was seasoned. So you have a little bit of seasoning already in there. So basically all we have to do to this is add cream. Okay, and that's going to give it a nice creamy consistency. So we'll go from there. I'm going to finish up the couscous. Okay, I have that back here. And all you do with this is just fluff it up with a fork. 
Okay, so you, you break up all those little grains. Okay, if you wanted to at this point, you could add a little bit of olive oil to it to just, you know, keep it separated, but I'm not going to. So uh, now we're going to start adding some flavorings to this. Uh, this is store-bought pesto. Uh, you know, during the summer when pesto, you know, the basil is available, you can make your own. It's very easy to make pesto. But this, is, this was just, you know, store-bought. So we're going to add some of that. That's going to give it that nice basil-y taste. Okay. A few tablespoons of that. I have some uh, cherry tomatoes, and what I did is I have them. When you guys were eating your soup, I just I cut them in half. So we're going to add that in. And I'm going to put in, again, we're going to put some lemon in. We're going to put some lemon zest and some lemon juice. Uh, basil is, is, I think that basil is part of the lemon family. So it's got that lemon, well, I don't know if it's a lemon family, but it's got that lemony taste, basil. So we're going to put some of that in. And I, I like the taste of lemon. I, I like lemon zest in, uh, in, in foods because I like that fresh taste. Get that in. I'm going to juice it. This, this by itself is, is a good side dish, but if you wanted to, you could add uh, other vegetables to it. You could add some leftover chicken to it, some shredded chicken. You could throw in some shrimp if you have some shrimp left over. And you could make and put it on some lettuce leaves, and you, ha you have a nice little salad that would go nicely with the soup that you had. So you'd have soup and salad. Okay, I have some Kalamata olives. These are just black Greek olives. I know it says to have them, but who cares? We throw them in. Okay. <laughs> Uh, they, they're not like, they don't taste like the olives, the black olives that you buy like in a can, you know, that you normally buy. They have a little saltier, brinier taste. Okay. <laughs> Get those in. And we're going to add some feta cheese, some crumbled feta cheese. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to do it. Okay, so with that, let's give that a... Get that all mixed in. Oh, you can smell the feta cheese. Oh, that smells good. You can smell the feta cheese and the lemon. It, it has such a nice, fresh taste. Okay, we got that in. What I have here is I have some mint. This is fresh mint. And uh, I'm going to Add that right at the end. I could smell it, but it, this mint did not look too healthy when I bought it. I mean, but, you know, just do what you want. If you wanted to, instead of mint, you could put fresh basil on top. If you had some fresh basil. Okay, so you can give that a little bit of chop. And you want to put that in at the end because you don't want the flavor to be lost. Okay, we're going to need a taste tester to see if it needs any salt. Casey, come on up here, since you're right up there. Just give it a little taste, see if it needs salt or whatever. Need a taste, not a little sip there. Come on, you have <laughs> three pieces of couscous. You can... A little salt. Okay, that's why you got to taste it at the end, you know, because you never know how salty, like, the chicken stock is that you're using or whatever, so you got to wait and taste it at the end. And it's always better to undersalt than to oversalt because people can put salt on at the table, you know, when you serve it. I know some people like a lot of salt, but I don't really use a whole lot of salt when I cook. Okay, so that's all done. Chicken is done. Okay, again, we're going to have to give this a little bit of a taste just to taste the sauce. Go 
look at me like you're in trouble. <laughs> okay, give the sauce a little bit of a taste and we'll see if it needs anything. It's, it's hot. Good. Okay. Remember, we salted the, the seasoning that was on the coating that was on the chicken. So that, remember, that's going to go through all that. So all we have to add to this now is some cream. We're basically done with that. Okay. So I'm going to add. This is going to turn it pink. Make sure you turn the heat off when you do this part because you don't want the cream to curdle. Okay, so that's all done. What I'm going to do is I have some in the back here, and I'm going to add it to what I made this afternoon. This is what I had in the, in the oven, just heating that up, and I'm going to add this to this. Just to make sure we have enough for everybody to eat. And I'm just going to mix those two together. This is a dish that you could make way ahead of time. If you have any, and you, and you don't want to serve all of it, you could freeze it before you put the cream in. Okay? Just freeze it. Then when you take it out, heat it back up, then add the cream at the last minute, and then serve it. Okay? Okay, so we have that. We have our couscous. Uh, we're going to take a break right now, and you guys are going to eat again. We'll take the apples out of the oven, and then when we come back, I'm going to make the sauce for the apples, and then you're going to have dessert. Okay? So I'll move this all over here. I guess I need a spoon in there if I want you to eat it, huh? <laughs> okay, what we're going to do now is I, ha I took the baked ap apples out, and what I did is I put them in individual containers. Um, don't worry about what they, they, you know, they look like uh, stuffed peppers because I forgot that they were in the oven. So they're nice and soft, but you don't have to chew very much, so it'll be good. What I'm going to do is you could either serve this with vanilla ice cream, or I'm going to make a yogurt sauce. I have uh, some uh, vanilla yogurt. And you could use this on any kind of fruit. You know, if you wanted to make like a fruit dip, you know, for uh, fresh fruit, you could use that. So I'm going to put two of these in here. May not use all of it, but. You know, yogurt is a nice alternative to mayonnaise. You know, it's a lot lighter. Okay, so we got that in there. Again, I'm going to zest some lemon. And I'm going to zest it right in here. And I'm using vanilla yogurt for this, so we won't have to add any vanilla. Okay, it's not plain yogurt, it's vanilla yogurt. Whoa! I'm not going to add the juice from this, okay? I'm not going to add the juice. I'm just going to use the zest because I don't want this to get really thin. Okay, stir that in a little bit. And we're going to add some honey just as a nice little sweetener, a little aftertaste. Okay, uh, maybe about a uh, quarter of a cup, you know, just... Just stir that in. I'm going to add a dash of cinnamon. Not too much because you don't want to overpower the, the, the honey and the lemon. Just so it's a little bit of a taste in the background. So 
got that going. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, drizzle a little bit of this over the top. Spoons are over here. So as we get this going, you guys can come up and have your dessert. So you had uh, pomodoro chicken. You had lemon basil couscous. You had some nice uh, spinach and uh, pasta soup with beans in it and a nice little dessert. So uh, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see some of you next week, right? Yep. OK, good. I'll drizzle the sun, then you have to come up and get your own. <laughs> This is the part that I meant you have to come and get your own. <laughs> okay? <laughs> well, that was our cooking plan for today. I hope those of you in class enjoy eating the meal prepared, learned a few new cooking shortcuts, and will try these recipes at home. To those of you watching at home, I'd like to thank you for being with us and encourage you to join us in class. And remember, from my family to yours, Always make time for family and friends by sharing a great meal around your kitchen table.